Hello everybody, I'm here with Max Schausberger, program lead of the Elevator Lab, uh, the FinTech Accelerator program of the Raiffeisenbank International, RBI. Hello Max. Hi, nice to be here with you. So tomorrow, uh, May 1st, the uh, application phase of batch 2 for uh, the Elevator Lab will start. And first of all, I want to ask you, what startups are you looking for? What are you searching for exactly? Yeah, we are all really excited that the next batch of Elevator Lab is now started. Uh, we in the Elevator Lab, but also our colleagues in the whole RBI group, in our network banks, our subsidiaries in Eastern Europe, um, we, are, we can't wait to get in the new applications. Um, we are looking for fintech startups that uh, uh, can create value together with RBI. We want to test their solutions. We want to further develop them. We want to test them in our markets, um, see how we can also integrate them into our IT architecture, test it, uh, test it with data from, from RBI and um, after four months being in a position where the startups, but also we as RBI can say, okay, we want to go further, we want to cooperate, and uh, we want to roll out into our markets. Um, this is the goal. So we have very little time. It's only four months uh, with a really a packed program. Um, it's a virtual program. Uh, so actually the startups don't need to move to Vienna um, to be here for the whole four months. Uh, we um, bring them in to Vienna uh, uh, once a month. So it's really intense three days per month where they are working with our colleagues from the bank, where they get input by our external mentors who are really experts, distinguished experts from various industries. We have in there uh, investors, we have in there um, corporate clients from ours, also from other industries who are interested in the innovation that is taking place uh, in, in fintech. And um, uh, But the most important part, of course, is this close interaction between our uh, business units, our experts, from CEE and here in Vienna um, to work together to create a pilot project and really showcase um, that a cooperation uh, makes sense. So that's the goal of the whole thing. What do we need for that? Um, of course, the startup uh, uh, needs to have a certain stage of maturity for that. Uh, it's not easy to work with such a, a big corporate like RBI. Um, uh, of course, uh, we need some uh, first product uh, that we can work with. Uh, we need uh, to have uh, a certain solution that we can evaluate together. And um, what we learned from last year, from the first Elevator Lab batch, was um, that the startup needs um, to have also the capacity to do it. Yeah? Um, it's intense four months together. They have the, the chance to show what they can in a very short uh, time, uh, um, but you also need to be ready for that. Um, so um, we are looking uh, globally. Uh, you can apply from wherever you want. Last year we had uh, over 300 applicants from over 50 countries. We were, we were really, really surprised about this number. Uh, and um, uh, it's, it's simply amazing to see, uh, it's, it's inspiring for the whole organization to see um, all what's out there, uh, the new ideas. And um, that's why we are extremely excited that now, tomorrow, the application starts again, new ideas come in and uh, we can start working with them again. So you were explicitly talking about uh, fintech startups and these new ideas. Is it possible for our viewers out there, is it possible um, that a non-fintech startup, a startup from, a, from another technological field, uh, would bring the benefit to you or would uh, be um, a sufficient app applicant? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. And it's, a, it's actually a matter of definition. Yeah? What is a fintech? Uh, and um, uh, for us, uh, it's always the question, can we somehow cooperate? Yeah? Is there any possible mutual vision yeah, where we can say um, we, we benefit both sides from a, a, a potential cooperation? So, of course, our, uh, our core business is banking and, uh, uh, and fintechs are the closest to this. Um, 
But uh, due to all those trends out there, the regulatory opening uh, of banks, uh, also customer um, uh, customer changing habits, yeah, um, it's more and more relevant to look also f uh, for banks, yeah, to look over the borders of our industry. And um, uh, so I can only encourage all the startups who see a potential benefit in cooperating with a bank, who also see... Um, the Central and Eastern European markets as um, a, a, a very good market to internationalize, to apply to RBI, uh, to apply to Elevator Lab, because um, here we have the potential to enter um, a market, Central and Eastern Europe, which is in re really, really interesting uh, in sense that it's... Uh, Growing, it's uh, it's a uh, it's the growth uh, forecasts of our of our markets are uh, above any uh, average of uh, of European Union countries uh, or the, the European Union average. Um, uh, the the customers are increasingly uh, changing. Uh, the, the the mobile applications uh, uptake rate etc. It's uh, all uh, are growing rapidly. Uh, so there is a huge potential uh, for a cooperation in fintech. Uh, together with banks in this market. Uh, still, CE is not an easy market. It's a very diverse market. It's a huge market. Uh, over 500 million potential customers. That's huge. Um, uh, but uh, you need a, a banking partner that uh, has experience to be able to enter this market on this scale. And here uh, we are confident that RBI uh, is the only one out there at the moment who uh, has uh, established uh, this scale of a corporate accelerator that enables a fintech to internationally show what they can do and, uh, and, and over a very short time um, internationalize in this market. So talking about the CEE market, uh, you used compared to batch one, you're, you're involved much stronger um, the subsidiaries in the CEE market, your uh, network banks. So what is the purpose of that? Mm -hmm. So uh, I just spoke about the application uh, applications from last year's Elevator Lab. We had over 300 and about a third was uh, from our markets in Central and Eastern Europe. And we were really happy about that and there were really strong candidates among them. Um, but we are also confident that this ratio could actually be higher. Um, and um, that's why we involve now very strongly eight of our network banks um, who are not only piloting, but who are really doing their own elevator labs. Um, they already started some of them. Yeah? Um, we are out, the applications are out in, in as I said, eight markets. Uh, and um, we already have a, a really good number of applicants in the, for those local elevator lab challenges. It's more or less the fast track to our group-wide uh, group elevator lab for the local startup ecosystem. We as a bank, we are now in CEE for 30 years. Um, there are well-established networks locally with the startup ecosystems. Uh, we do have well-established and also based on trust um, 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 a network with our with our customers so uh, and customer relations. So this is the basis on which we want to build also in our startup corporations. So we are really happy and excited that we can use our, our network uh, of 14 banks in Central and Eastern Europe to closely interact with the local startup ecosystem because we saw last year that there is immense potential in Central and Eastern Europe. But sometimes the spotlight, the international spotlight is just missing on those markets. And uh, we want to create a platform for Central and Eastern Europe for fintech startups to show themselves on an international uh, level. At this point, we could mention that uh, the participants in the local elevator labs have the chance to get a wild card for the group-wide elevator lab, where application starts tomorrow. Um, let's uh, change the topic anyway. <coughs> now, you were already talking about the learnings from batch one. So what are the changes? I saw that some search fields changed. For example, you have uh, different search fields this year. Uh, why did you change them and what did you change exactly? 
I mean, the, the banking industry is changing every month, I have to say. Uh, um, every month there are new topics popping up. Uh, uh, our business units are um, really close to the developments uh, um, that are happening in their fields of ex expertise. And that's why, of course, we uh, from, from Elevator Lab team need to adapt what we are looking for each year uh, and um, this close interaction with the business units already from step one is crucial also for then the selection and then the pilot projects. Um, we are really looking for fintechs that can solve very concrete um, uh, or have answers to very concrete questions of our business and um, that's why uh, we have to change uh, search fields uh, every year and um, Some of them stay uh, um, uh, because they are still relevant uh, and some of them uh, come in new. Uh, we have uh, now um, some search fields uh, in there uh, from, from the markets area, but also from, uh, uh, from settlement, etc., where, uh, where you can actually use uh, the distributed ledger technology to have an amazing effect on, on the efficiency on uh, our organizational setup in the bank and we are now ready um, to pilot those things. Um, last year we knew that this was coming up, we, we, we evaluated the effects on our business and on our organization but now we feel and our business units our colleagues feel that they are ready to pilot those things with uh, uh, also with external partners with startups we not only um, uh, are now uh, part of the r3 consortium we are also um, uh, since one uh, since uh, two weeks three weeks we are uh, now part of the um, uh, of the uh, blockchain research uh, um, institute from from Don Tapscott. Uh, he was here uh, three months ago and it was an amazing and inspiring speech. Um, and this international network, this inter, uh, like exchange with, also with other institutes, especially in the blockchain topic is uh, uh, um, really, really important. Still, we think that there are out there startups who can bring extra value to us who can then also try out new things based on our experience that we have in those consortia like Arthi or the Research Institute. Uh, coming back to your learnings from batch one, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, did you encounter any challenges in batch one that you're addressing now? Of course, uh, the first uh, Elevator Lab round was an, a learning journey, a learning journey for the startups and for our organization. Um, we, we know now a lot of little things in the organization that we didn't know before. Um, we adapted from uh, how we look at the things uh, from an IT security perspective, how we look at it from a procurement perspective, how we look at it from a compliance perspective. Completely different. Um, and we adapted our internal process to the needs of the startups. This is crucial. Um, it's another type of partnerships as we uh, were having before. Um, and um, that's also one of the reasons why we are doing this accelerator program to have uh, an, 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 a very structured entry process for this new kind of partners for fintechs who are not like standard partners as we had it the last 30 years before. Uh, and um, so we had quite a lot of organizational learnings. Uh, um, for us internally, it was also important to see the motivation from our network banks, from our subsidiaries in Central and Eastern Europe. Um, we learned that the sooner we involve them uh, uh, in our process of Elevator Lab, the better. And we will do that this year more, even more intense. And um, What we also learned was actually how be mutually beneficial for us, for the startups, but also for our external network, it was to involve already, as I said in the beginning, investors, our corporate customers, um, and other experts in the field uh, to exchange and have an innovation discussion together based on, this, uh, on these use cases that we are doing with the, uh, with the startups. So, as a very last question, I would ask you, could you address our, uh, our viewers directly and tell them why they should participate or why they should, should apply from tomorrow? <laughs> so, 
Elevator Lab uh, also today is already the biggest uh, fintech accelerator in Central and Eastern Europe. So it doesn't matter if you are from Central and Eastern Europe or from other countries uh, globally. If you think that CEE is a market where you want to scale in, if you th feel that RBI is a good partner um, to develop your solution further, to get input from experts from the field, um, then the Accelerator program, Elevator Lab, is the right choice. We are, um, we are partnering on the same eye level. Uh, <laughs> we are really uh, not uh, any biased relationship or anything is our goal, but we want to partner up with you. Um, and, uh, and so apply for Elevator Lab, use the chance to get visibility all across our group, it's 14 markets, um, it's the visibility to our top management, uh, but also to our experts from the field. And um, let's see, if you are chosen, then uh, you will get uh, amazing support, amazing access, we open up everything uh, uh, we can do for you. And um, uh, if you have any doubts about it, simply ask. The, uh, the, the participants from last year's Elevator Lab. You find them on uh, elevator-lab.com. Uh, this is a very important address because there you can also apply. So please do so. And uh, uh, we are really, really looking forward to a lot of applicants. And we're looking forward to write about uh, those applicants and the, the startups that finally get into the program. And of course, doing video interviews with them like this one. Max, thank you very much for the interview. And I wish you a lot of success with your program this year. Thank you.